Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be his kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Give us grace, O Lord, to answer readily the call of our Savior, Jesus Christ, and to proclaim to all people the good news of his salvation, that we and the whole world may perceive the glory of his marvelous works, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated for the readings. Reading from the book of Nehemiah. All the people of Israel gathered together into the square before the water gate. They told the scribe Ezra to bring the book of the law of Moses, which the Lord had given to Israel. Accordingly, the priest Ezra brought the law before the assembly, both men and women, and all who could hear with understanding. This was on the first day of the seventh month. He read from it facing the square before the water gate from early morning until midday in the presence of the men and women and all those who could understand. And the ears of all the people were attentive to the book of the law. And Ezra opened the book in the sight of all the people, for he was standing above all the people. And when he opened it, all the people stood up. Then Ezra blessed the Lord, the great God, and all the people answered, Amen, Amen, lifting up their hands. Then they bowed their heads and worshipped the Lord with their faces to the ground. So they read from the book, from the law of God, with interpretation. They gave the sense, so that the people understood the reading. And Nehemiah, who was the governor, and Ezra, the priest and scribe, and all the Levites who taught the people, said to all the people, This day is holy to the Lord your God. Do not mourn or weep. For all the people wept when they heard the words of the law. Then he said to them, Go your way. Eat the fat and drink sweet wine, and send portions of them to those for whom nothing is prepared. For this day is holy to our Lord, and do not be grieved. 
for the joy of the Lord is your strength. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The psalm is Psalm 19, which we will read by whole verse responsively. The heavens declare the glory of God, and the firmament shows his handiwork. One day tells its tale to another, and one night imparts knowledge to another. Although they have no words or language, and their voices are not heard, their sound has gone out into all lands, and their message to the ends of the earth. In the deep has he set a pavilion for the sun. It comes forth like a bridegroom out of his chamber. It rejoices like a champion to run its course. It goes forth from the utmost edge of the heavens and runs about to the end of it again. Nothing is hidden from its burning heat. The law of the Lord is perfect and revives the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure and gives wisdom to the innocent. The statutes of the Lord are just and rejoice the heart. The commandment of the Lord is near and gives light to the eyes. The fear of the Lord is clean and endures forever. The judgments of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. More to be desired are they than gold, more than fine honey. Sweeter far than honey, than honey in the comb. By them also is your servant enlightened, and in keeping them there is great reward. Tell how often he offends. Cleanse me from my secret faults. Above all, keep your servant from presumptuous sins. Let them not get dominion over me. Then shall I be made whole and sound and innocent of a great offense. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my strength and my Redeemer. The New Testament reading is from 1 Corinthians. Just as the body is one and has many members, and all the members of the body, though many, are one body, so it is with Christ. For in the one spirit, we were all baptized into one body, Jews or Greeks, slaves or free, and we were all made to drink of one spirit. Indeed, the body does not consist of one member, but of many. If the foot would say, because I am not a hand, I do not belong to the body, that would not make it any less a part of the body. And if the ear would say, because I am not an eye, I do not belong to the body. That would not make it any less a part of the body. If the whole body were an eye, where would the hearing be? If the whole body were hearing, where would the sense of smell be? But as it is, God arranged the members in the body, each one of them as he chose. If all were a single member, where would the body be? As it is, there are many members yet one body. The eye cannot say to the hand, I have no need of you, nor again the head to the feet, I have no need of you. On the contrary, the members of the body that seem to be weaker are indispensable. And those members of the body that we think less honorable, we clothe with great honor. And our less respectable members are treated with greater respect whereas our more respectable members do not need this. But God has so arranged the body, giving the greater honor to the inferior member, that there may be no dissension within the body, but the members may have the same care for one another. If one member suffers, all suffer together with it. If one member is honored, all rejoice together with it. Now you are the body of Christ and individually members of it, And God has appointed in the church first apostles, second prophets, third teachers, then deeds of power, then gifts of healing, forms of assistance, forms of leadership, various kinds of tongues. Are all apostles? Are all prophets? 
Are all teachers? Do all work miracles? Do all possess gifts of healing? Do all speak in tongues? Do all interpret? But strive for the greater gifts. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus, filled with the power of the Spirit, returned to Galilee, and a report about him spread throughout all the surrounding country. He began to teach in their synagogues and was praised by everyone. When he came to Nazareth, where he had been brought up, he went to the synagogue on the Sabbath day, as was his custom. He stood up to read, and the scroll of the prophet Isaiah was given to him. He unrolled the scroll and found the place where it was written, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim release to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind to let the oppressed go free, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. And he rolled up the scroll, gave it back to the attendant, and sat down. The eyes of all in the synagogue were fixed on him. Then he began to say to them, Today this scripture has been fulfilled in your hearing. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. 
Please be seated. What we get in today's second reading is a very well-known metaphor, which is that of the body of Christ. And the reading that we have today is a continuation of last week's epistle reading, where, to refresh your memory and mine as well, Paul explained how the gifts of the Spirit, gifts that come through the Spirit from God, are given to individuals. These are gifts that don't belong necessarily to the individuals, but they do belong to God. And individual people might not really have a say in the gifts that they get. That also is up to God. And so all is well and good thus far in the reading. But then Paul continues. So yes, there are many gifts distributed to individual members of this community in Corinth, but they are still one community gathered together in the name of Jesus. Paul moves on then to this well-known metaphor of the body, and he applies it to that community. And I suspect most of us think of this part of Corinthians when we hear people talking about how we are all members of a larger whole, especially when we consider the church as a larger whole, and one that cannot function well if some of us as members are missing. So one thing that's interesting to note is that this metaphor of the body is not unique to Paul or to the early church. It was known and used in the Mediterranean world of the first century but it was also used as one that would strictly reinforce already existing hierarchies, whether in families or in society as large. The head is the most important part of the body. The head commands the body, it tells the body what it can do, and it can sacrifice individual members if needed. So while the body can't survive without the head, the head is able to survive without certain parts of the body. So Paul takes this concept, and as he often does, he turns it upside down. What he says is that all of the members of the body are important. They need each other, and the body cannot be whole unless all parts are present, and that they are treated respectfully. And in this case, in this letter to the Corinthians, this is a theme that runs throughout it, his concern with this community and the people in it is that they were making distinctions among themselves that some people were thinking that they were more important than others, that they were the head and the rest of the body was subservient to them. They were clearly using this old way, this old first century way of thinking. But what Paul is saying here is that it cannot be this way among you. This is a case where the good of the whole is going to transcend the desires of the individual. If any member of the body is suffering, then the whole of the body suffers along with that number. And so here Paul is in the first century, also addressing us in the 21st century. We often pride ourselves on our individualism and on our self-reliance. That's just really a part of who we are as Americans. But as with all aspects of culture, it can be carried too far. There is, I think, a conflict between a desire for unfettered individualism that seems to be thriving now, but also alongside that a realization that, like it or not, we are all connected to one another. And what Paul is doing in this letter is trying to convince this congregation in Corinth and this congregation here in the cross that the good of the whole outweighs some of the conflicting desires of the individual. And then he comes on to this famous line where he writes, you are the body of Christ. And what he's really saying here is you all are the body of Christ, not just one of you and not just a small group of you. All members of this body are important. All have something to contribute. All members have gifts to offer. And the most important gifts may not be and probably won't be found in the people who consider themselves to be the most indispensable and the most important. So what it sounds like in this reading is that he's asking us, Paul is asking us, that we discern what gifts we have as a community, where those gifts might be, and where haven't we looked yet. So I know last week, Father Nick told us not to settle for just going back to the way things were. And I've been here for less than a week, and I'm just starting to get to know you, but I suspect that the gifts that we need here in this church and in this community are already here and the members of the body of Christ 
that is gathered at Christ Church. And maybe they're found in places that we haven't looked yet. Maybe they're even in ourselves, in places that we don't recognize, but that others in this community do. So I think one of our tasks now is to start looking together for the benefit of the whole body. Amen. Please stand and let us profess our faith using the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The prayers of the people this morning are Form 3, found on page 387 in the prayer book. Father, we pray for your holy Catholic Church. That we all may be one. Grant that every member of the church may truly and humbly serve you. That your name may be glorified by all people. We pray for all bishops, priests, and deacons. That they may be faithful ministers of your word and sacraments. We pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world. That there may be justice and peace on the earth. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake. That our works may find favor in your sight. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble. That they may be delivered from their distress. Give to the departed eternal rest. Let light perpetual shine upon them. We praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. May we also come to share in your kingdom. Let us pray for our own needs and those of others. We pray and give thanksgiving this morning for Michael, our presiding bishop, Matt, our bishop, and Father Mike, our rector. We pray for our parish families, especially Lonnie, Christy, Bowden, Annika and Sophie, Claudia, Robert and Julie, Greg, Mandy, Benjamin, and Matilda. We pray for those celebrating birthdays, especially Cindy, John, Greg, Alex, Austin, Bentley, Cheryl, Carla, Harrison, and Ben, and those celebrating anniversaries, Thomas and Sandy, and Yacoub and Sarah. We pray especially for Joe, our president, Tony, our governor, and Mitch, our mayor. And we pray for healing and comfort, especially for Anne, Ann, Darren, Burley, Dan and Donna, Dick, Ed, Grace, Joe, Joy, Julie, Julie, Kathy, Kermit, Nathaniel, 
Pat, Pat, Pete, Sam, and Steve. In the Anglican cycle of prayer, we pray for Hong Kong, Shen Kong Hui. And in the Eau Claire cycle of prayer, we pray for St. John's, Sparta. Almighty and eternal God, ruler of all things in heaven and on earth, mercifully accept the prayers of your people and strengthen us to do your will. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your name, amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. I'll start out. Um, please be seated. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> On behalf of the vestry and the wardens of your church, welcome Father Mike. <laughs> we waited a long time, glad you're here. <laughs> <laughs> uh, because of COVID and the current surge we're going through, um, we're gonna do communion a little differently again. Um, Doug will release you by row to come up Father Mike and I will just stand here in the middle and you'll receive communion from us that way. Uh, and then go back to your seat and consume. Um, the current surge is pretty bad, uh, but we're still here in church. We're all masked and we're safe. And that's just another way to keep us safe. And thank you for maintaining your distance inside the church. Um, everybody did a wonderful job this morning. Thank you. Just a quick note, uh, we do have uh, regular wafers, the couplet, which is the wine in one side, and then the wafer in the other side, and we have gluten-free options of both of those. So if you need gluten-free, just uh, tell Father Mike or, or Tim. The other request, uh, as Father was talking about in his sermon today, is we uh, always need assistance, whether it's uh, lectors or ushers, or help with the altar guild, uh, please, if you are so moved, uh, we would love to have your participation uh, with, with all of the volunteer opportunities that we have here. And uh, you can reach out to Father Mike uh, or one of the vestry members and find out about all the opportunities. Thank you. Thank you, last one. <clears throat> on behalf of Bob, our treasurer, I'm here to say um, he is diligently working on putting together the budget for the coming year. There are still several pledge cards that are still outstanding. People have not sent those in yet. He's making one last request that we get those in so he can build us a budget. And he does an outstanding job every year of making good use of our resources. And he wants me to remind you that, that those pledges aren't merely to help pay the staff and keep the lights on in the church. It's those pledges, it's those donations that make it possible for us to meet the mission of this church and meet the mission uh, that we have as the body of Christ. So please, if you have 
your pledge card still outstanding. Or if you have never pledged in the past and are interested in pledging now, uh, please reach out to any one of us on the vestry or directly to Bob Weathers, and we will point you in the right direction. So thank you very much. So some of you also saw the email that sent that I had to send out earlier this week just in response to COVID. So just a couple of reminders. One, thank you all for wearing masks and for wearing them properly over your nose. Um, it's always important to do that. I'd also like to thank Ed and Wanda because they provided us with um, some really nice N95 respirators, but it looks like the eight o'clock crowd cleared us out. So maybe by next week, they'll be back. <laughs> and finally, um, it's really nice to be here. So thank you again for, for welcoming me here. Um, I really look forward to this journey that we will be taking together. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, a sacrifice and an offering to God. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Because in the mystery of the word made flesh, you have caused a new light to shine in our hearts and to give knowledge of your glory in the face of your son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name.
Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love, you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him. In the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever, amen. The gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him with your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
May the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord.